In today's video, we are talking about the drug classification antimycobacterials, and I'm going to be showing you what clues can be found inside this word, as well as a handy acronym to help you remember which drugs you would find inside of this classification. And we're going to do all of that right after this. Welcome back, my name is Tammy and this is Nurse Minder and if you haven't already done so, subscribe and hit that notification button so that you get the notification when the next video is released. Now today, we are talking about anti-mycobacterials. Mycobacterials against mycobacterials, this is a clue and we're going to break down this word here for us in a second. So in terms of the mycobacterials we're talking about, most commonly we're referring to leprosy and tuberculosis, really chronic conditions and now that is a clue, okay? We also have avium intracellular, so we have the three mycobacteria, avium intracellular, mycobacteria tuberculosis, and mycobacterium lepri. So mycobacterials, there's a clue as to which diseases we need to remember related to this antibiotic. Now I'm going to use the word myco for another visual clue and to help us understand what's happening inside the body with these bacteria. So when we think of myco, I'm just going to go my coat and we put on a coat so we can go outside and we can stay out longer and enjoy it and so we can stay out much longer than without our coat, right? Now this coat is orange for a reason and we're going to come back to that very visual clue. But what happens with this bacteria is they have this outer coat and it's made up of mycolic Mycolic acid, so there's the other clue for myco, it's a shorthand for the acid that coats around this bacteria, and what it does is it makes it really resistant to disinfectants. It takes an awful lot of effort to break down that coat in order to get into the cell to cause cell death. So they can survive for very long periods, and we know that tuberculosis, uh, leprosy, those are really long chronic conditions, and so this is the reason why it's because it takes an awfully long time to break this down. Once we can break down this coat, then we go in and what antimycobacterials do is they actually attach, they actually work at the site of DNA and RNA synthesis. So it prevents those things from happening, which causes cell death. Now, when it comes to our antimycobacterials, 99% of the drugs I'm gonna teach you today are specific to tuberculosis, the mycobacterium tuberculosis. The one for leprosy is dapsone. Just remember, dapsone, leprosy, antimycobacterial, you're good to go. Everything else is going to be related to tuberculosis in this video. There's a first line and a second line, and I've got a few keywords to help you remember both of those drugs. The medications that are in the first line, I have the, the acronym PRIORS because that stands for the beginning of each medication. These ones do not have a pattern, those characteristic things that you can go, oh, that medication belongs in this classification. These ones you will just have to memorize or look them up, obviously, in practice. But when we come back to the coat, remember it's cold outside, you're wearing your coat, and you don't want to give it up, right? But we're trying to get that coat off of the bacteria in order to kill the cell. We want to be able to penetrate it so we can kill the cell. So, I mean, if that's you, you're not given this coat. If your coat was safety, there's no way I would have to pry this coat off of you. And that's what these medications are doing. They are prying that, that outer coat off of the cell. So to help us remember, you can use the word prior. That is a person who pries. And here's the medications. So generics are always lowercase. Pyrazinamide, rifampine, isonazide, this is a common one I see. Ethambutol, rifampentine, and streptomycin. And I may not be saying those in the same ways that you say them, but recognize that these are your first line drugs. Commit those to memory. When it comes to second line drugs, we're gonna use the acronym CERB, but with two C's. So CERB became popular as a result of COVID. It was a funding that people received to um, pay them so that it wouldn't become in financial dire straits. So we've got double C, E, R, B. Capriomycin, cycloserine, ethionamide, rifabutin, and betaquiline. Now, you'll notice that there's a couple letters that are the same on both sides, right? So the first one is R, In prior we have rifampine and rifampentine. They have pin or pen in it. Whereas the other one, rifabutin, has a U, that's gonna be second line. So U comes after P in the alphabet, it's just a quick cheat code. 
The other one is FM butol and we have ethionamide. So F A comes before F I. That's just the way to remember first versus second line. Now, with that, your patient will be on a combination of medications in order to attack the cell at various stages. And they will be on these medications for a long time because, why well, erase it, these are very resistant to treatment. All right? Now, one of the major side effects you need to teach your patients, you see this orange coat, I said we're gonna come back to it. Orange coat stands for the staining of your tears and your sweat, and it can actually permanently change and stain your clothes. Okay, before we go on, I know that this one is a bit, um, oh, this one has a little bit more work to do to memorize and to recall some of these facts, but I have the word antimicrobacterials and the orange coat. That's your clue. I want you to just take a few moments now and jot down in the comments below everything that you can come up with related to this coat how you can use this to remember all of the things in first line, second line, and where this medication is working. And now we're okay, so let's get into some of the nursing considerations. So most of these medications are oral. There's a couple that are given IV and you just wanna make sure you know which ones are given IV. Uh, I believe rifampine is one of them. But you know, they're absorbed in through the GI tract, they're metabolized by the liver and excreted through the urine. Fairly common as per most medications. Of note, this does cross the placenta and it will enter into breast milk. So now, we don't deny pregnant women treatment for tuberculosis or leprosy. We need to balance the outcome with the gains. Now there is a combination that has been identified in the pharmacology textbook. So for those of you who are wondering, I use the Focus on Nursing Pharmacology with Amy Karch. This is the 8th edition. And in there, they mentioned that the combination for pregnancy that would be considered safe is isonicide, rifampine, and ethambutamol. You want to make sure you memorize these three if there's an NCLEX test. Contraindications. Now, this is important. So because we know medications that are metabolized by the liver and excreted by the urine in any medication, you need to make sure that their liver and their kidney are functioning. So if they have severe liver or kidney disease, we need to be making sure we're addressing that. Uh, and that may be a conversation with the physician. Allergies, of course, to the same medication, you don't want to give it to you, but if they have a severe CNS, central nervous system challenges, we want to be watching that because the side effects with the CNS system, our central nervous system, are neuritis, hallucinations, drowsiness, headache, and malaise. How are we going to remember this? Let's go back to the coat, people. The coat is our clue for everything today. If you're outside and you're wearing your coat, and I've been able to pry it off of you, but you stay outside, you get cold. What happens when you stay outside and you get cold? Well, you get tired. You might start to hallucinate. You may start to notice that your nerves are kind of on fire because they're getting frostbite. And so these are some significant side effects to be teaching on and to be watching for if you're on antimicrobacterials. We mentioned the orange sweat and tears. It's also the orange urine. And then GI, because it's going into the GI system, Always nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain we want to be teaching our patients about. In terms of how long it takes for these medications to work, anything that's taken orally usually takes about 15 to 30 minutes to get started because it needs to be broken down, entered into the bloodstream, and then hit its target site. Its peak is one to two hours and the duration can be upwards up to 24 hours. Remember, these patients will be on these medications for months. This isn't just once a day for a couple of weeks. These are long-term medications. So now let's try an NCLEX question. All right, so you are caring for a 32-year-old female who's being treated for a new diagnosis of tuberculosis. In reviewing her health status, she shares that she is 14 weeks pregnant. Based on this finding, what medication combination do you anticipate will be ordered? Go ahead and review all the four different selections. Go back and watch that part of the video and then give me your answer. All right, so if you said A, then you would be correct. Congratulations on picking that up. With so many drugs to remember, this is one I wanted to pull forward just because of the pregnancy and how important it is to know which medications would be safe for that patient. Thanks for watching today's lesson on antimycobacterials. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get notified when the next video is released. And go back and watch a few of the other ones that I've done uh, in order to really see how much we can gain from a single word. Today we used the play on my coat to come up with the coat, the orange coat that gave us all sorts of information beyond that. So 
Sometimes we have to be a bit creative in our lessons, but I hope this one helps you a lot. Make sure you're commenting below and letting me know that this has been helpful and what was the best part for you. Take care, guys. Make it a great day.